Welcome to this Good Friday. Bienvenidos a este Viernes Santo. Tonight is night two of what is called the, the Tridium or the three day vigil, beginning Monday, Thursday, and ending with the resurrection of our Lord on Easter Sunday. Um, este día comenzamos los tres días que son um, Jueves Santo, Viernes Santo y el Viernes, um, perdón, y el Sábado de Gloria y luego llegamos entonces hasta el Domingo de Resurrección. This evening we will be hearing the Gospel story, the Passion of Christ from the Gospel of John. En esta tarde escucharemos um, el relato de, de la historia de la Pasión de Cristo um, leído de la versión de Juan. Again, for those of you who are joining us just now, the, the service will be bilingual. Um, otra vez, para los que acaban de llegar, el servicio va a ser bilingüe. So we will be reading, alternating in Spanish and English. Vamos a estar leyendo um, alternado en inglés y en español. You will need your bulletin because as you, you will have your bulletin in either English or Spanish. Van a necesitar su boletín para ya sea en inglés o en español, el que quieran gusten leer. And we invite you to read along so that you can follow when the, um, when the passage is not in your language. Y les pedimos que sigan el boletín para que puedan saber cuando no esté leído el pasaje en su idioma. begin with the opening prayer. Comenzamos con la oración de apertura. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Oremos, Dios Todopoderoso, mira con amorosa misericordia a tu familia, por la cual nuestro Señor Jesucristo estuvo dispuesto a ser traicionado, a ser entregado a manos de los pecadores y a sufrir la muerte en la cruz, que ahora vive y reina contigo y el Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Amén. 
We will continue with the reading from Isaiah. If you do not have a program, a bulletin in your language, either English or Spanish, we invite you to get one from the Narthex and to follow along with the bulletin. From Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Despreciado y rechazado por los hombres, varón de dolores, hecho para el sufrimiento, todos evitaban mirarlo. Fue despreciado y no lo estimamos. Ciertamente, él cargó con nuestras enfermedades y soportó nuestros dolores, pero nosotros lo consideramos herido y golpeado y humillado por Dios. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that makes us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. We continue with the song, O Lord, hear my prayer, in English and then in Spanish. Betrayal and Arrest of Jesus from John 18. La lectura continúa con la pasión de Cristo y el, el arresto de Jesús de Juan 18. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kindred Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, 
Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus replied, I am he. Judas el traidor estaba con ellos cuando Jesús les dijo, yo soy. Cuando Jesús les dijo, yo soy, dieron un paso atrás y se desplomaron. ¿A quién buscan? Volvió a preguntarles Jesús. A Jesús de Nazaret repitieron, ya les dije que yo soy. Si es a mí a quien buscan, dejen que estos se vayan. Esto sucedió para que se cumpliera lo que, había, lo que se había dicho. De los que me diste, ninguno se perdió. Simón Pedro, que tenía una espada, la desfundó e hirió al siervo del sumo sacerdote, cortándole la oreja, del, de la oreja derecha. El siervo se llamaba Malco. Vuelve esa espada a su funda, le ordenó Jesús a Pedro. ¿Acaso no he de beber el trago amargo que el Padre me da a beber? Jesus before the high priest. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Pedro niega a Jesús. Simón Pedro y otro discípulo seguían a Jesús. Y como el otro discípulo era conocido del sumo sacerdote, entró en el patio del sumo sacerdote con Jesús. Pedro, en cambio, tuvo que quedarse afuera junto a la puerta. El discípulo conocido del sumo sacerdote volvió entonces a salir. Habló con la portera de turno y consiguió que Pedro entrara. ¿No eres tú uno de los discípulos de ese hombre? Le preguntó la portera. No lo soy, respondió Pedro. Los criados y los guardias estaban de pie alrededor de una fogata que habían hecho para calentarse, pues hacía frío. Pedro también estaba de pie con ellos calentándose. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have done nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? 
Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Mientras tanto, Simón Pedro seguía de pie calentándose. ¿No eres tú también uno de sus discípulos? Le preguntaron. No lo soy, dijo Pedro negándolo. ¿Acaso no te vi con él en, en el huerto? Insistió uno de los siervos del sumo sacerdote, pariente de aquel a quien Pedro le había cortado la oreja. Pedro volvió a negarlo y en ese instante cantó el gallo. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is my turn. I didn't realize that. Um, I guess it's going gonna, it's gonna to be important. Um, well, this, um, this evening we gather in solemn, devo solemn devotion um, to remain, remember the death of Jesus, um, to remember the price for our salvation. Esta noche nos reunimos um, en un culto devocional muy solemne para recordar la muerte de Jesús, la muerte de Jesús que es el precio de nuestra salvación. I am very happy to announce everywhere that salvation is free, that you don't have to do anything to earn it, but that is because it was bad for us. Yo estoy bien feliz de ir por todas partes anunciando que la salvación es gratuita, que no tenemos que hacer nada para ganarla, pero eso es porque fue comprada para nosotros. Salvation has a price, and the price was the life of Jesus, the Son of God, the Anointed, the Messiah. But don't worry, as I tell the kids, this, this story has a happy ending. El precio de nuestra salvación fue la vida de Jesús, la vida de Jesús, el Hijo de Dios, el, el ungido, el Mesías. Pero no se preocupen, esta historia, como les digo a los niños, tiene un final feliz. Jesus, the Son of God, came to the world as a servant, as a shepherd looking for his sheep. Jesús vino a este mundo como un servidor, como un pastor buscando, por su, buscando a sus ovejas. As a good shepherd, he gave his life for his sheep. Como buen pastor dio su vida por sus abejas. Jesus gave his life for you, for you. Jesús dio su vida por ti. He could have come down from the cross by his power, but he didn't. He didn't because he, um, the nails, it's not what hold, what hold Jesus to the cross, but what hold Jesus to the cross is the love he has for you. In order to save you, he chose to stay on that cross. Jesús se podía haber bajado de la cruz porque los clavos no detuvieron a Jesús ahí en la cruz. Los clavos no es nada para él. Con su poder él se podía bajar, pero él prefirió. Él um, tomó la decisión de estar ahí, de quedarse en esa cruz por ti porque a ti te ama y quiso dar su vida por ti. Jesus is the one and only source of true salvation. Jesús es la única y verdadera um, fuente de la salvación. Where is the happy ending that I, that I promised? ¿Dónde está el final feliz que prometí? Es la promesa. La promesa de que en ese árbol, en esa cruz, donde Jesús fue colgado y donde Él murió, es en verdad un árbol, una cruz de vida, de vida eterna. Um, I don't know if I already said this in English. Well, the happy ending is this, is the promise Um, the promise that in that tree, in that cross where Jesus died and, and where he um, was hanged and died is indeed a tree of life, of everlasting life. La paradoja aquí es que 
en esa cruz. La cruz es vergüenza, um, pero, el que, pero Jesús no le importó avergonzarse por ti y esa vergüenza se convirtió en gloria. The, the, the cross is um, humiliation and shame, but by Jesus dying on the cross, the cruz, the cross is now um, a blessing for us. The one who was blameless, who committed no sin, became sin for us on the cross. El que no cometió ningún pecado y no tenía ninguna culpa, se hizo pecado por nosotros en la cruz. La cruz, um, sing, the cross signifies damnation. But by Jesus' death, it became a blessing, not just for you and for me, but for the world. Dije esto antes, la cruz significa condenación. Pero cuando Jesús muere en la cruz, entonces la cruz es ahora bendición, no para ti, para mí solo, pero para todo el mundo. Um, the death of Jesus and the cross gained us, gained for us eternal life. Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. And that is the happy ending, that by his Um, by his death, we now have new life, eternal life in God. Jesus is the one and only source of true salvation. Amen. Continuation from the Gospel of John, Jesus before Pilate. Continuamos con la lectura del libro de Juan, um, Jesús ante Pilato. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. 
They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Pilato volvió a entrar en el palacio y llamó a Jesús. ¿Eres tú el rey de los judíos? le preguntó. Eso lo dices tú, le respondió Jesús, o es que otros te han hablado de mí. ¿Acaso soy judío? replicó Pilato. ¿Han sido tu propio pueblo y los jefes de los sacerdotes los que te entregaron a mí? ¿Qué has hecho? Mi reino no es de este mundo, contestó Jesús. Si lo fuera, mis propios guardias pelearían para impedir que los judíos me arrestaran, pero mi reino no es de este mundo. Así que eres rey, le, le dijo Pilato. Eres tú quien dice que soy rey. Yo para esto nací y para esto vine al mundo, para dar testimonio de la verdad. Todo el que está de parte de la verdad escucha mi voz. ¿Y qué es la verdad? preguntó Pilato. After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone to you for the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. Cuando salió Jesús, llevaba puestos la corona de espinas y el manto de color púrpura. Aquí tienen al hombre, les dijo Pilato. Tan pronto como lo vieron, los jefes de los sacerdotes y los guardias gritaron a voz en cuello, ¡Crucifícalo, crucifícalo! Pues llévenselo y crucifíquenlo ustedes, replicó Pilato. Por mi parte, no lo encuentro culpable de nada. Nosotros tenemos una ley. Y según esa ley, debe morir porque se ha hecho pasar por hijo de Dios, insistieron los judíos. Mm. 
Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Solo Dios basta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Solo Dios basta. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. Al oír esto, Pilato llevó a Jesús hacia, hacia afuera y se sentó en el tribunal, en el lugar al que llamaban el empedrado, que en arameo se dice Gabatá. Era el día de la preparación para la Pascua, cerca del mediodía. Aquí tienen a su rey, dijo Pilato a los judíos. Fuera, fuera, crucifícalo, vociferaron. ¿Acaso voy a crucificar a su rey? replicó Pilato. No tenemos más rey que el emperador romano, romano contestaron los jefes de los sacerdotes. Entonces Pilato se lo entregó para que lo crucificaran. Y los soldados se lo llevaron. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which is in Hebrew called Golgotha. And there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. When the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Cuando los soldados crucificaron a Jesús, tomaron su manto y lo partieron en cuatro partes, una para cada uno de ellos. Tomaron también la túnica, la cual no tenía costura, sino que era de una sola pieza tejida de arriba abajo. No la dividamos, se dijeron unos a otros. Echemos suertes para ver a quién le toca. 
y así le hicieron los soldados. Esto sucedió para que se cumpliera la escritura que dice, se repartieron entre ellos mi manto y sobre mi ropa echaron suertes. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesús, recuérdame cuando vengas en tu reino. Jesús, recuérdame cuando vengas en tu reino. Era el día de la preparación para la Pascua. Los judíos no querían que los cuerpos permanecieran en la cruz en sábado, por ser este un día muy solemne. Así que le pidieron a Pilato ordenar que les quebraran las piernas a los crucificados y bajaran sus cuerpos. Fueron entonces los soldados y le quebraron las piernas al primer hombre que había sido crucificado con Jesús y luego al otro. Pero cuando se acercaron a Jesús y vieron que ya estaba muerto, no le quebraron las piernas, sino que uno de los soldados le abrió el costado con una lanza y al instante le brotó sangre y agua. El que lo vio ha dado testimonio de ello y su testimonio es verídico. Él sabe que dice la verdad para que también ustedes crean. Estas cosas Sucedieron para que se cumpliera la escritura, no le quebraron ningún hueso. Y como dice otra escritura, mirarán al que han traspasado. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloth, according to the burial custom of the Jews. 
Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden, there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Oh, 